Welcome, lab assistant. Today, we'll be investigating the food safety and shelf life of sun-dried corn, or maize. Sun-drying sweet corn is an ancient preservation method still used today. UV rays from the sun help to kill microbes on the corn, while drying lowers water activity within the kernels. When water activity levels are low, spoilage and disease-causing microbes can't grow and reproduce, since microbes, like other organisms, require water to survive. This slows spoilage and prolongs shelf life. When water activity is less than 0.6, almost all microbes, including bacteria, molds, and yeasts, stop growing, as seen in the virtual lab Understanding Water Activity. To learn more about how water activity affects microbial growth, see the virtual lab Understanding Water Activity. Vegetables are usually dried even further to a water activity of 0.3 to 0.2 for safety and quality. Today, we'll test the water activity of corn dried using traditional methods developed and used by Native Americans in the upper Great Plains of the United States. Dried corn for this experiment was prepared by removing the silk and husk from ears of mature corn. Blanch the ears. Boiling for 10 minutes. Blanching is placing food, most often vegetables or fruits, into boiling water or steam for a short time. Blanching stops enzyme action that can cause loss of flavor, color, and texture. It also cleanses the food's surface of dirt and organisms, brightens the color, and helps slow the loss of vitamins. Remove the kernels from the cob. Sun-dry the kernels outdoors between two screens for several days until they are brittle. Many Native American and Hispanic cultures have similar traditional methods of drying corn and other foods. First, we'll test water activity of the newly dried corn. We'll put the corn in cloth bags and store each in a different environment. After 30 days, we'll test the corn again. Some people use pillowcases to store their dried corn. This allows for continued aeration. Glass jars, plastic containers, and plastic bags are also commonly used. These environments are hanging in a dry pantry, sitting on a shelf against a wall in a dry pantry, sitting on a shelf in a damp basement. Accurate measurements always start with calibrated instruments. This procedure assumes that you have already calibrated the water activity meter. Use the virtual lab Understanding Water Activity to learn how to calibrate a water activity meter. The accuracy of your measurements comes from calibrating, testing that the meter is measuring accurately using a substance with known water activity. Before storing the corn, we test the water activity. After 30 days of storage, we test again to see if there was a change based on the storage environments. For precision, We'll need to take three samples each time we test a batch of corn. In the lab, always follow safety rules. Basic lab safety procedures. Wash your hands before and after handling materials. Wear gloves and safety glasses when handling chemicals. Don't eat or drink in the lab. Avoid wearing dangling jewelry or loose clothing. And pull back long hair. Follow equipment operating instructions. Clean equipment after use. Let's start by measuring water activity for newly dried corn. This newly dried corn is our control. A control is a base treatment you can compare to experimental treatments. In this lab exercise, our control treatment is drying corn and measuring its water activity immediately. Our experimental treatments are storing dried corn for 30 days under varying conditions. Prepare the corn for testing. First, Place a scoop of kernels into a small grinder. To keep the sample from gaining or losing moisture before testing, wear gloves so your skin doesn't add moisture to the sample. Make sure testing is done in a room with a low ambient temperature. Use sample lids or parafilm to reduce air exposure in samples waiting to be tested. Grind up the corn. Now add a bit of this mixture to the sample dish enough to cover the bottom of the dish completely, but don't fill the dish more than half full. Shake the dish gently to get an even distribution. 
Then, press down the corn with the backside of a clean, dry spoon. Open the water activity meter drawer and carefully place the sample dish inside. When the meter beeps, the measurement is complete. Record the water activity measurement and the temperature in your lab notebook. Test two more samples from the newly dried corn, the control. Record the water activity measurement and the temperature in your lab notebook. The temperature reading is additional information. It refers to the sample's surface temperature at the time the water activity was taken. Average the three control samples. By taking these multiple measurements and averaging them, you increase the precision or reproducibility of your measurements. The dried corn starts out around water activity 0.25. That's within recommended levels of water activity, 0.2 to 0.3 for dried vegetables. After 30 days, now we'll test the water activity of the corn after storage. Recall the three treatments of stored corn. Treatment A was hung in the pantry. Treatment B sat on the pantry shelf against the wall. Treatment C was stored in the damp basement. Now we'll test the water activity of the corn that was hanging in the dry pantry, treatment A. Again, for precision, we will need to take three samples from treatment A. As before, prepare the corn for testing. First, place a scoop of kernels into a small grinder. Grind up the corn. Now add the ground corn mixture to a sample dish, enough to cover the bottom of the dish completely, but not fill the dish more than halfway. Shake or tap the dish gently to get an even distribution. Then press down the corn with the backside of a spoon. Use a new spoon for each sample to prevent contamination. Open the drawer in the water activity meter and carefully place the sample dish inside. Close the door and start the measurement. When the meter beeps, the measurement is complete. Record the water activity measurement and the temperature in your lab notebook. Then dispose of the used sample and close the drawer. Test two more samples from treatment A. Record the water activity measurement and the temperature in your lab notebook. Average the three samples from treatment A. Now we'll test the water activity of the corn that sat on the pantry shelf against the wall, treatment B. Again, for precision, we will need to take three samples from treatment B. Try this on your own. When the meter beeps, the measurement is complete. Record the water activity measurement and the temperature in your lab notebook. Remove and dispose of the sample and test the other two samples from treatment B. Record the water activity measurement and the temperature in your lab notebook. Average the three samples from treatment B. We'll test the water activity of the corn that was stored in the damp basement, treatment C. Again, for precision, we will need to take three samples from treatment C. Record the water activity measurement and the temperature in your lab notebook. Average the three samples from treatment C. Take a look at the average water activity of the samples. Which method of storage do you think will maintain safety and quality of the dried corn the longest? A. Yes, that is correct. Treatment A's low average water activity indicates that dried corn hanging in a bag in a dry pantry did not absorb water from the air. This maintains the water activity of 0.2 to 0.3 required by most safety and quality standards. However, this is only for 30 days. More research is needed for longer term storage. Corn under treatments B and C did not maintain the water activity of 0.2 to 0.3 required by most safety and quality standards. This demonstrates that when storing dried foods, storage conditions must be controlled in order to maintain safe water activity levels. Around the world, traditional and conventional methods of drying and preserving food are based on the same principle, controlling water activity. This virtual lab focuses on controlling water activity in foods by removing the water, which can be done using dehydration, evaporation, 
freeze drying, or concentrating. The virtual lab understanding water activity addressed additional ways of controlling water activity, such as binding up water by adding salt or sugar. Ever since humans began storing food, they have manipulated its water activity. People didn't always use the term water activity, but they understood that removing or binding water makes food last longer without spoiling and also makes it easier to grind. How you store food is also important. Native Americans and other peoples around the world have used various methods over time, including jars made of pottery or birch bark to protect dried corn and seed corn from moisture and contaminants. Corn kernels stored in a jar at Taos Pueblo in New Mexico were still able to sprout after 200 years. Today, we often seal foods in plastic or store them in glass jars. Now that scientists can measure water activity with lab equipment, we leave less to chance. We can test food to make sure it's safe and stable and design effective storage and packaging.